today we're going to make a landscape and it's going to be a winter landscape that is using the cool colors which is going to be greens blues and purples we're going to make a silhouette which is going to be um trees that are black and it's going to be very simple to create just a few steps and then you can add the color using watercolors so i'm going to go in and make my hills because this is going to be snow on the ground the next thing i'm going to do is make trees and creating those trees, I'm going to just have some branching lines. I'm going to do a couple of them, kind of like a cluster of trees over in this area. This one's in the foreground, so it's going to be much larger. They're going to overlap. And then I'm gonna put one way in the background. So I've made five trees. Now with my Sharpie, I'm going to go in and just trace over those. I'm gonna make the bases a little bit thicker so that the trunks are a little bit wider at the bottom. I can apply very little pressure on my Sharpie to make very delicate branches. I'm barely touching the paper with my Sharpie. So I'm making branching lines. kind of wavy lines, thin lines, thick lines. So the more I put those little delicate lines, those become more realistic branches which make our trees look much more realistic. And you always, whenever you're creating any art, you always want to have three to five items. It's much more pleasing to the eye. And if you have a little bit of pencil marks, you can always go in and erase that. I'm gonna spin my paper so it's easier for me to add those branches. And I'm just gonna keep on overlapping them. I don't have to have super straight branches just because in life we know branches grow organically. They're not processed to grow super, super straight.
I'm going to spin that around so I can now see the rest. I'm going to add this little bit more, kind of bring it down where it's a little bit more triangular. And these are the kind of the roots of the tree. So this kind of um, got me started here. It's just a straight line. But then as I add more to it, it becomes thicker. And those are those thick lines that we were talking about. And then here are the thin lines. And I'm just going to overlap. And now I'm going to go in and do my horizon line. This is the line that the sky meets the ground. And if I want to add some more texture, I can. These are maybe some snow drifts. So the next thing I'm going to do is just erase some of those pencil marks that I put in. And I'm going to erase those. And now I'm going to start painting my sky. And I'm going to start with a blue. And I can paint right over those Sharpies. It's really important that you use Sharpies because if you are painting and you use a washable marker, it will dissolve kind of bleed out and then you won't have your um, nice silhouettes of trees. Now I want this to be lighter down here. So I'm just going to apply some water so that it's lighter here and then I'm going to have it get darker. I'm going to put some more up here. And this is either when the sun is setting or when the sun is rising. And you get all those different shades in the skies. The less water I use, the darker the paint will be. I'm going to add some green, but then I'm going to put um, some blue on top of it, and it will make it more of a turquoise. blue right on top and I can mix right on my paper I'm using watercolor paper so that when it dries the paint kind of bleeds into each other because the paper has a texture to it. And 
because of that, I get a really cool tie-dye bleeding effect. a little bit more purple in here and can put that right on top. So I'm getting some different shades in there, overlapping. That's a pure green, but now I'm going to add my blue to it and make it more of a turquoise. I can even add a little bit of purple to it, and it makes it much darker at the top. And I'm just overlapping my watercolor so I have more splotches of color, which is much more realistic when the clouds are out and the sun is rising and reflecting on those clouds. snow is starting to show. I'm going to apply just a little bit of water so I get more of those different shades. I'm going to let it dry. If I want to put a little bit of shadow down here, I can take just a little bit of the black. Just a little bit, just a little bit. And I can even bleed it out some. Just a little bit. 
and then put some water on top. Your trees are going to create a shadow, so I kind of put a little bit more in there, but the thing is I'm barely touching the paint, and I'm just dragging it around, kind of using my brush on the side. And now I'm gonna just use water and blend it out. And I can just drag, if I get too much paint in there, I can just drag that out. If you get puddles, push those puddles out so you don't have big lines on your paper. The key is whenever you use any type of paint, it's learning to how to control that paint and not have a ton of water. So now I'm gonna let, I'm gonna put just a little bit more purple over here cause it's darker at the very top. Because the sun is setting. The sun is setting. So the sun is down here. And it is, the atmosphere is much darker at the top. And let it dry. <laughs> 